Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your host, Calder Ness. This episode, we're chatting all about some Gamma stuff. Been a little while since everything came out at Gamma, but we're getting to it right now, giving our thoughts and opinions and whatnot on all the cool latest Hero Clicks coming up in the year of 2024. This is episode 509. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. Help. I have the high ground. Oh, yeah, you may have the high ground. It's over, Simeon. Yeah. Instant deadpan. Oh, 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 six six oh, people oh, think I am funny. I'm oh, your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fool. Simeon will be able to make that out. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make your clips like that forever. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Click singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. And if you want to go buy straight from the source, you can go to Shop.WizKids.com. Use code DialH10 for 10% off your order from Shop.WizKids.com. A Hero Clicks order does not work with pre orders, specialty offerings, scout porters, things of that nature. Good make always in the studio is Simeon Brewers. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, you know. I don't want to talk about weather. I don't want to talk about food. You know what's, okay. what's what do we want to talk going about? on? This isn't what made me happy, so I'm gonna say this on the, the drop. Okay. I don't want to watch four dogs. That's a <laughs> lot of dogs to watch. I always thought I wanted to live with like a bunch of dog four dogs is a lot of dogs to watch in a week. I know my sister's subscribed but doesn't listen, so she won't hear this. That's a lot of dogs, lady. <clears throat> yeah, that's what's going on. <laughs> taking care it's you're being a nice brother though at the very least i don't blame you i wouldn't want to do it that's a lot that's a lot of work it's a lot to do oh gosh that's funny well besides watching four dogs because that didn't do it uh what did you make make you happy this week simeon oh man what made me happy this week is i probably ate my i like we we've talked about wings before i think We've we've got a video or two with wings. It's right, just, it's just one, but we've we've established uh, throughout the the Dial H mythos that we're wing enjoyers. Enjoy chicken, enjoy a lot of food, but wings are like a thing I really enjoy. Probably ate close to four pounds of wings this week. Oh my gosh, it's, like, it's problematic. Uh, Dang, and it's only going to get worse knowing that the Buffalo Wild Wings go is like four minutes away from me now i think they want you to take the food and go but i just take it and i just eat it at the window while i make eye contact and so far they haven't told me to leave so i'm i'm digging it i buffalo wild wings go they should put one on every corner should be like cvs buffalo wild wings go all right i mean get your wings get out of there or make longing eye contact i just imagine you like slowly cleaning like sticking the entire like flat in your mouth and then pulling it out and there's no meat <laughs> and then you just stare at them just like a little sweat comes down your forehead yeah. and then like a, a crow lands on my shoulder and i hand the bones off to it and it carries them away <laughs> oh my god yeah oh these uh, birds yeah they love my bones they Simeon, what's the audience the audience wants to know what's your go-to buff b-dubs order what's the what's the simian spread oh it's uh, in any place that does increments of 10, it's always got to be 20. My cap okay. for a normal meal is like about 12, 14 wings. Depends on the size of the wings and stuff, but it's usually like 12 to 14. But I always want leftovers, so it's always 20, and 10 is not enough for, to satiate my wing desire. Sure. So I always have to get 20. And then uh, the flavor, when it's buffalo wild wings, I like to go with the hot buffalo. It's a little too hot to be like perfect but the medium buffalo or like the regular buffalo it just isn't good i just don't like it it's not hot enough and uh they come out with like crazy flavors i like mango habanero that's fine i'm not big into sweets though and that one can be like pretty heavy on the sweet front um i know a lot of a lot of people love like the garlic parm ones and i've tried like one or two i just I don't know. When I dig into a wing, it's got to be spicy or nothing. Uh, okay. What's the other okay. flavor I tried recently? It's from a new place. It was hot enough that it wasn't as bad as our hot ones video, but man, okay. 
I had to go out and buy some Tums because, like, my my stomach mm. was just like a little coal pit. Like that that little engine was, you know, little guy shoveling coal into the fire the whole night. <laughs> and I was like, I can't sleep. I need some Tums. So that was fun. I made that mistake again the next day, and uh, I will continue to make that mistake because nice. I'm a glutton for pain and delicious hot food. Very nice. Very nice. The the mango habanero is one that I really like. I'm much lighter on the, the spice tolerance, much, much lighter on the spice tolerance than Simeon is. So I do. I might have to second the mango habanero for the listener to give that one a try because that one's pretty good. And I... I don't know. I like a little. I like a little sweet. I like the the kick with the sweet. Uh, what made me happy this week? Real quick before we get into the rest of the show, but I got to go up to beautiful, windy. I mean, it's windy all over, but windy South Dakota this weekend. I got to hang out with some friends. Got to watch the play, Death Trap, up at the Old Town Dinner Theater, where I got to see a bunch of my theater buddies. It was great seeing them again, hanging out. Uh, they had a Hawaiian beef for a little bit of food talk, a Hawaiian beef and a Cajun chicken meals that I got to try both. Uh, very good. Very, very good. Cajun chicken had a little bit of spice, nothing crazy. And, and then, of course, went over and got some free ice cream courtesy of Cold Stone and a Hero Hooks player that works there. I won't, blow, I won't blow up his spot, but appreciate that. Always appreciate that. And we went and played some board games with my friends that I was staying with this weekend. I got to try a new game, 221B Baker Street. It is a Sherlock Holmes time travel game uh, with H.G. Wells' time machine. The idea is that Watson and, and Holmes are trouncing around the 20th century with some of the greatest mysteries, unsolved cases and whatnot uh, of the 20th century, yeah. the likes of which include... <laughs> What's the newest uh, mystery on there? <laughs> Uh, the newest mystery, or at least the last one, is whether or not Elvis is alive or dead. That is the final mystery. Still unsolved. The, still unsolved. Still unsolved. The, uh, one of the first mysteries is like the Zodiac ciphers, trying to find the Zodiac killer and un, like cipher, decipher his message. Uh, the Project Camelot, there's two for the JFK assassination, which I love. Uh, there's a J just straight up the JFK assassination, and then the other one is who was Jack Ruby and Lee Harvey Oswald. Um, <laughs> pretty cool. There's there's quite a few. There's a few other ones of like uh, there's like a DB Cooper heist, a mystery to solve. There's a few other ones that I'm not as familiar with. There are 20 mysteries in this thing, but it's very similar to Clue, where the game board and rolling the dice is just more so a hindrance in getting to area to area to where you can find a clue. Um, I will say, I can't honestly remember the rules for Clue, but once you say, this is what I think happened, uh, it's like A through D. So like Elvis, this is the one we played. Is Elvis alive? Yes or no? If so, where is he? Right? So that was A and B. Alive, yes, no. Where is he? Is the answer to B. Um... I won't spoil it for anyone that wants to play. But once you say, well, this is what I think it is, you obviously look, see if that's correct. And then if you're wrong, then you're just out of the game. I think those are clue rules as well. You're just out of the game once you obviously see the evidence to see that you're wrong. So that's pretty fun. But honestly, wow, what a fun game. There's a few cool mechanics in it where it's not just going from room to room. You can actually lock rooms and then unlock rooms, which is really cool. So you can stop people from getting certain clues. It does kind of give away if there's a good clue in that room, but it at least makes them have to take an extra step. Because once you lock a room, it's like, well, obviously, I got to go there next. So then they have to just go travel, get a key, unlock the room, and then get in there. But man, what a fun game. The second game that we played, and we actually played this game, we played like six rounds of this game, and I'm very proud to say that I won four out of the six rounds out of the three players of us and one player won zero out of the six rounds which is hilarious um we played Featherlight, the game that you got me uh Simeon for Christmas oh yeah and okay. it's actually it's actually super fun it's a really simple game it's like super easy to learn but then it's like addicting to play because it takes like no time at all to run through it so you get a hand of five feathers and then you get the nest, which has six feathers. It's all randomized cards. And then depending on how many players you can play, uh, for us three, we took out seven feather cards. 
And then basically all the feathers have rules that kind of correspond with how you can get points. And your goal is to obviously get as many points as possible by the time the game ends. The game ends when one of the two draw piles in the middle of the nest is fully depleted. So it's really cool. Uh, a lot of the blue nests, uh, or sorry, blue feathers are based off of how many uh, duplicates of cards you can get. So you kind of look at either cards in your hand. Uh, there are some effects that are purely for your hand. And then some effects just say feathers in general, which means your hand and the nest. And then some cards are specifically for the nest. So when you draw a card from a feather in the pile, you then have to, you only ever have five cards in your hand. And you're basically just trying to make a, a run sort of in a way. So you then you have to discard and put it onto a pile in the nest, one of the six piles. So that changes the color of feather typically on top of that given nest pile. And a lot of them will be like, you need to have one of every color on the nest out of the six colors. And it's like, dang, that's really hard to control because you have two other players that are also drawing, discarding, whatever, right? The most fun card is you take the pile in the nest that has the most cards in it, and you just get to count all of those and add that to your current score. That's all that card does. Um, the highest we could ever do is like get 20 points out of that card for any given discard pile. But it's really such a fun game. All the black cards are based off of odds and evens. All the white cards are just straight up points, but they don't combo with anything. So they're just, they're guaranteed points, but they're low points. So you'd rather go for like a yellow card, a blue card that gives you points if you meet a certain requirement because it's just so much more points. But it's a very straightforward game because all you have to do is draw or discard or swap a card in the nest with a card in your hand. And those are the only two actions you take. All the cards are pretty self-explanatory. You're just looking to make run runs, looking to make a bunch of duplicates or trying to get one of every color, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's really fun. Like I said, we played six rounds. It's a blast. I'll have to make sure uh, Simi and Ian and I all play it sometime because it actually is really fun and it's a super fast game. So Featherlight is also, I know I've ranted about it for like two minutes. It is also a WizKids game. So make sure you guys check that out if you want to order something from shop.wizkids.com. Our code won't work with it, but it is still a very fun game and I enjoy it. Yeah. When I was reading on it, I was like, okay, this card, like this color card does, gets points like this way, this color. I was like, that's, that's fun enough. Like that's an interesting like mechanic, and then what really sold me was just like the ugliness of the little bird on the front. The the Putu bird. Putu. Yeah, <laughs> he's uh, so he's Polly. He's Polly the Putu, and the lore of the game is that he falls out of his nest and his feathers go scattering everywhere, and you've got to try to whatever make points out of his feathers. But he's just so ugly. He's so ugly. He's cute. It's kind of like the. The baby Jabba the Hutt from Clone Wars, you're like, ah, oh, or like Baby Yoda, where it's like, ah, eh. yeah, fugly, fugly little guy. Like, I'd probably scream little. in real life, but since it's not real life, it's just an cute, image. Cute little gross guy. Like, yeah. you could, you look at that bird and you're like, yeah, if he was like in an animated Disney movie, he would just be falling off stuff constantly. Like when, the, when the listeners picture, picture me, that's what they see. Oh, They're no. Like, oh, like, I don't, I don't want to see that in real life, but, eh, funny little, cute yeah. in theory funny guy I and mean, they think of simian moose yeah <laughs> the little simi uh, yeah oh gosh but all right guys let's go ahead and jump into some hero clicks here a lot of news out of gamma we're just gonna go through big shout out the clicks nexus facebook page kind of has a lot of these screenshots uh the champion clicks open facebook page was also able to get a ton of these up and then the screenshots weren't great but they have a lot of good information on them uh so for a lot of the sculpts seeing them in higher detail up on our page we have a lot of the good sculpts looking very nice looking really cool so Really quickly, uh, let's just jump into the 2025 starter sets. We get a look at what the figures are going to look at for the 2025 starter sets. I think they're quite fun. I really enjoy the Marvel set. I love this version of Falcon. This is Falcon as Captain America. This is Symbol of Truth Falcon specifically. You kind of look at the blue on his shield and the way the star looks. He's from this latest Captain America Sam Wilson book. And he's doing this really cool shield tackle dive thing, which I quite enjoy. Yeah. The uh, entire Marvel starter set looks to be White Widow, Yelena Belova, the Thor, and then a Hulk, and then Sam Wilson, Captain America. What do you think of the Marvel set? 
Simeon. Just looking at sculpts, we got no info on these guys. Sculpts are really solid. Thor's uh, his costume design is also like one of the newer ones. That like yeah. triangular uh, white patch is from like the Harold Thor. Like this isn't Harold Thor, but like that's like kind of the outfit that uh, where he became like the angular instead of like the just four like uh, whatever those little those buttons <laughs> there so in the mcu they're medals apparently i rewatched the first thor movie a little while ago and he says these are medals or odin tells him these are like medals and i'm like oh cool yeah. i guess so whatever his big old button things yeah yelena coming out of like a smoke shroud thing very like very similar to mysterio where he's always like got yeah. like, that smoke bubble she's like coming out of like a smoke cloud that's cool and then hulk i don't know Hulk being like all veiny and stuff. I think he's holding because we'll see. We'll see in the DC yeah. one. It, I'm assuming this is he's holding like a I beam, like a girder kind of thing. That's that's what it looks like to me. It looks like he's holding that like a girder I beam type of deal. I like the character choices for the Marvel set. Yelena seems like an interesting choice. The only thing I'm worried about. I hope her smoke looks better than Iron Man's smoke. His kind of came out foggy. I hope hers is more, like, translucent clear. It looks more translucent clear in the picture, so I'm hoping it turns out that way. Uh, But then to the DC side of things, we do get the Trinity again, which, I mean, DC loves pushing the Trinity. Like, that's that's just what DC loves doing. Um, But then the fourth character, we get to pick up a Blue Beetle, which is his Buster Blader big Final Fantasy sword, Blue Beetle, straight up, like, from the movie, like, 100%, man. Um, But the cool thing, kind of what you were alluding to, Simeon, is Superman has also an I-beam girder that he is holding. So it's kind of, you know, kind of showing they're fighting each other. Kind of, you know, like a little uh, little wink-wink. We can't necessarily say this is Marvel versus DC, but uh, the wink, 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 wink looks pretty cool. But getting the Trinity, I won't lie, I'm not in love with getting the Trinity again, but these sculpts are just way better. Like, Superman, I could take or leave, obviously, because I think the Superman punch version of him and the girder version are both fine. Not even getting into his character and my hatred for it, but just I think these are both fine sculpts. But Batman is straight up better. Wonder Woman is straight up a better sculpt. Uh, Batman tossing double batarangs cape flowing jumping up in the air that looks sick oh my gosh it's awesome wonder woman only slight problem with wonder woman is she has no coils for her lasso so her rope is very very short <laughs> Four foot. but yeah, at the very it's least free range lasso yeah it's very 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 short at the very least the uh the length of it is going in front of her uh, versus behind her like the wonder woman chase set version from a few years ago so mm-hmm. lasso physics Rope physics are getting better for Wonder Woman. I'm very happy about that. But she has no coil, so her lasso is very, very, very short lasso. It's a good sculpt, though. And Blue Beetle is, man, what a welcome addition. Even though the movie wasn't great, he's looking sick. But those are the two starter sets. Nothing else too crazy. We don't know anything else about them except for kind of a slight getting into the bag or bag of promotions if you order a case of the Marvel starter set, you are going to get a little Wolvey figure. And it does say in the bag Young like sculpt. It's seen this sculpt before, but so it's not qu- quite Scotty Young. It's we did see this with uh, the Deadpool Weapon X set stuff, but him being called Wolvey means he's like the exiles cartoony right. little silly baby little Wolverine. But he's not like but he's not X babies a Wolverine, though. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, I'll just really quick read this. So the give them this all new. So to engage new and returning players in your store, give them this all new promotional Wolvie from the Marvel Hero Clicks bag of Wolvie. This figure is the most adorable version of Wolverine. Simeon, is that correct? Is that, are we sure? I mean, we sure. 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 Okay. Hey, got to ask the master. Yeah, got to ask the master. I, I mean, I, yeah, fine. Anyone. We'll I mean, it says ahead. anyone could hope to have in their hero Hooks collection with simple beginner friendly common level gameplay so that probably means like a trader special power nothing nuts uh he is perfect for any hero Hooks players origin story stores can unlock access to order the bag of wolfie by purchasing 12 of the upcoming marvel hero Hooks 2025 starter while supplies last 
Together, these items are the team up your store is looking forward to excite players new and old about their Heroes Battle. So it does say no, this is kind of cool. This is a promotion subsidized by WizKids intended to be free to the customers. Ooh. So that's dope. Stores yeah. are may purchase one bag per one case of starter. So you get 12 units of a starter is one bag. So 24 units of a starter uh, is two units of the bag. And each unit of a bag comes with 12. So it's, it'd be like one for a starter. So if your store were to buy 12 starters, you would also get a little Wolvie for free with that. So it's kind of like you're a new player getting a new starter. Here is a new player friendly, new player level figure for free. So let's hope stores do that. That'd be really cool. That's the intent. I think that's awesome. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. So that is that. We don't see any DC Bago. Let me double check. I don't think we have any DC Bago stuff. So I don't know if the DC starter is also going to hand out anything. But those are the starters. Other Bago or bag of people. We see a Deadpool. We see a Wolverine, an unmasked Wolverine. And then we see a mummy for bag of stuff. Yeah, I really am interested in, like, the mummy, which seems like a generic, so uh, we do see a bag of Joker goon. Oh, that's right. Yeah, which, same thing, where it's uh, purchasing 12 of the upcoming DC mm. starter set. That's the one. okay. Um, it's the same sculpt as the normal Joker goon from Notorious, but I assume a different style and i mean obviously i i don't think they're just gonna release the same thing but i don't it'll be interesting to see if it has the goon trait if it uh has the 50 and 15 point starting line it'll be interesting to see what all is the same or different because really like how much can you do with like a 15 point line because that really like when it comes down to the goons that's what people care about is the 15 point line but, right yeah i i don't know I'm, I'm used to as well, but I think the bag ofs are definitely perfect for generics. Um, I think for the ones that are like free with the starter, that can be a non-generic and that's fine. But then if we're just going to, if you can just straight up buy a whole bag of these things, then yeah, the more I can play, the better. Moving right along to Gamma, we get the in-store championship organized play. We get a look at the Deadpool covered with his little championship belt. He's got Olympic gold medals. He's got a trophy, a crown, a sash. Little Miss America winner's sash, pretty cool. Um, it'll be the first dedicated in store championship kit uh, with participation prizes, and then the main prize of champion Deadpool for ultimate bragging rights. And then soliciting is coming soon. That's yeah. pretty fun. We get a look. We've already seen a lot of the Peacemaker iconic stuff, so we're not going to go over that too crazy. Uh, and then we've also seen the sculpts for the first appearance Wolverine, as well as the box art for that. Uh, sculpts are straight ripped from the yeah. cover of the comic which is really cool when to go well, like hilarious recreated it's definitely something where like if you took the time to pose them in a in such a manner you could take a picture and recreate the yeah first appearance like issue is this our most dynamic wolverine sculpt since the xxs i yeah, uh yeah, big I x so. it's gotta be right yeah unless you want to big jump count, like captive hearts it's not very dynamic but it is like very sculpted <laughs> feel i feel like as far as like dynamicness showing like motion in the sculpt you could yeah. say old man phoenix but that's like a big sculpt versus this one is like some big movement wolverine leaping toward you is this the first time we ever got his little cat whiskers costume also in hero, in hero i think so um okay i'd have to I feel look like it has to... some of the older sets but like we've definitely done some of like his interesting looks like the the feral adamantium list wolverine is like one of the crazier like costumes and stuff Ooh, yeah i think there's one where he's in like fang's costume uh but this yeah i think this is like the most classic like first appearance looking wolverine that we've ever gotten uh, obviously because it's covering or it's like sculpted like the uh cover of the issue but right no it, i don't think we actually have ever gotten the like tiny ears little whisker face Howl, whatever. It's definitely my favorite like color scheme, but the costume after this I think does it best when he has his more normal mask. Yeah. The no whiskers. That's my favorite costume. This is still my favorite like color scheme for Wolverine. But it is cool getting his cute little little tiny little little ears, little whisker Wolverine is cool. Uh next up, this is all brand new, but the Marvel Heroes Iconic Spider-Man first appearance is gonna be two figures. 
it, based on Amazing Fantasy 15. And then it is the Spider-Man. He's swooping in. I forget if this is like a, he's like a random guy he's saving, I'm pretty sure. I don't think it's like a villain. I think it's a guy he's saving, uh, this no-name dude. And then we also, and I really love this part, the like wrestling Spider-Man version of him where he's got like loafers on and he's in just like a white <laughs> shirt and a weird homemade mask and stuff. Uh, I really am curious to see the mechanics. Like, iconic first appearance Spider-Man should just be like a really, really solid version of Spider-Man with maybe a lower power level. But then I really hope that wrestler Spider-Man is kind of like he hasn't learned, you know, the great power, great responsibility yet, you know, and maybe he switches after a friendly character dies or something. I don't know. I'm really curious to see what wrestling Spider-Man's mechanics are going to be. But this is a really cool iconics, obviously... You know, love him or hate him, Spider Man's like the most well known Marvel character. Right. I think mean, I don't think that's even no, controversial I, to say. I think it's just I true. think without Spider Man being introduced and then gaining popularity like he did, I don't think Marvel would have stayed around as long as they Yeah. Because like other than Spider Man, like their one of their biggest selling books was like Fantastic Four. And like right. how, many, how many people that are reading comics today are like I don't oh. really want to pick up the new Fantastic Four. I, like, like, not saying anything wrong with it. I, I love some of the Fantastic Four runs. There's a ton of cool villains and stuff that go on. Like, obviously, Doom is like the standout one, but like also like Annihilus and Galactus and stuff. But like, there's a lot of fun Fantastic Four runs. But I don't think Marvel would be the same if it hadn't been for Spider-Man. So I agree Absolutely. with their little bullet point. Arguably the most iconic comic of all time because I think I think it has to be arguably though yeah hundred percent like I'm glad they they left a little room in there because yeah as far as covers go if we're saying all comics as much as I hate to say it it is just action comics number one is like the most iconic sure comic of all time I feel like it has to be and then maybe you could probably say Captain America number one and Amazing Fantasy fifteen like duke it out for second place i even think um, like well like my personal opinion i won't get into as, as far as like iconic comic covers for me because they're like the masses have spoken you know but yeah like the, i think the first appearance of punisher where it's spider-man in like the, the that scene. is yeah in the crosshairs that is so iconic so, so cool it like instantly tells you stuff's going down in this issue that's very true like Punisher's going to kill Spider-Man. <laughs> what? Yeah, we're yeah. going to end this comic after this issue. <laughs> like, that's how they used to sell Like, before clickbait. Oh, yeah. Comic covers were, like, the original, like, uh, headline <laughs> clickbait, where it was, like... I mean, comic covers really are just clickbait, I guess, yeah, right? It's, like, Hulk defeated, question mark? And then you had to buy it to see, oh, no, he wasn't. That's crazy. I can't believe it. I can't believe the Hulk is still going to be published next week that's yeah. wild like yeah it was <laughs> literally like the, the original clickbait was just the comic, the comic title, cover like, not yeah. even the titles just like the uh the splash like words oh gosh uatu There's blinded so many. question mark oh gosh we still i mean that still happens to this day like it really does it's not as obvious or apparent i think more covers are just like trying to look cool and they're going off a looking cool type of deal versus a this character dies oh, you know um but it's definitely so 100 percent still happens uh next up we get a little slide it just says beetlejuice it's showtime hero clicks iconics we don't get a dial we don't get a sculpt uh, they move on to Marvel Hero Clicks Deadpool Weapon X with a little blurb about that, which says Deadpool Weapon X and Wolverine will be only will be Marvel Studios only sport of film in 2024. That is true. Content will focus on both the seriousness of Wolverine and the silly Deadpool. Popularity in Deadpool search and merchandising surges in movie years. That's 100 percent true. First Hero Clicks set that will include collectible dice inside the booster bricks. So before we move on to anything else. People Simeon. said Dice Masters were dead, but guess what? It's not dead, just moved. It's right. it's just You've got moved. Dice Masters in Hero... They're going to be Dice Masters in Heroclix now. Not the really. That's, the Hero that's not exactly what they're saying, but I do love the idea of like some more iconic D6 um, kind of stuff going on. So like, yeah. you know, some stand-up kind of dice being in booster bricks which i don't know how much bubble wrap they're gonna have to put on those dice so people don't just shake it and be like clink clink yep oh very dice true pack. dice figure in this one 
Do you want to go ahead and jump into the gambit here, Simeon? Oh, sure. Yeah, so speaking of like the cool dice and stuff, they did release a preview of the Gambit 052 in the set. Uh, so he's got a classic X-Men costume. He's not like in his, uh, what, like, like duster? Trench coat. He's like, trench yeah, coat, trench yeah. coat, duster, purple body armor thing. No, he is in a yellow and blue X-Men costume with a little satchel to hold all of his cards, I assume. <laughs> oh, a, yeah. A satchel. We didn't think about that. Cards. Um, yeah, so also... If you watch the trailer for X Men ninety seven that's coming or already is out, I don't is it coming out or is it already out? I don't know. March twentieth, so later yeah. this week. By the time you hear this mm, no, Maybe. not quite. But no, it'll yeah, still be this will yeah. be out before then. But uh at one point Gambit charges like Wolverine's claws and people are like, Oh, like how does that even work? Wouldn't they just and it's like Gambit charges things with kinetic energy. So they don't always have to explode. The reason why they explode is because, like, he throws cards, which are just, like, paper. And if you fill paper with enough kinetic energy in this universe, I can't do this in the normal universe, mm. so, like, who knows? But if you fill it with, like, enough kinetic energy and throw it, it's, like, it's a fragile little paper thing, so it just explodes. Wolverine's claws are literally indestructible in, like, the X-Men 97 universe. So if it fills with kinetic energy, all he can do is, like, transfer kinetic energy to something that he hits with them, so... I'm cool with that scene. I think it's interesting and fun. I don't think it should be like, his claws are going to explode. That's an aside. Uh, this this Gambit, he's got the classic cowl, wavy hair. He's got the the glowing cards. He's pointing at him. He's like, which one you want? So he has a trait that is pick a card. At the beginning of your turn, you may roll Gambit's card die and place the result on his card, removing any other card dice there. If a Joker face thing is rolled first turn it to any other result gambit can use the effect matching the result of the card die on his card so the die is two jokers then a single one of each suit so six sides two of them are jokers then you've got diamond heart spade and club Uh, so for diamond it's modify attack plus one energy explosion for heart it's steel energy but with all attacks for the club, it's giant reach of five with quake, and for spade, it is modify range plus one, penetrating psychic blast. All of them really solid. All of them really crazy, to be honest. So yeah. the giant reach of five is to allude to his five range. So it just like makes him able to do a close attack instead of a range attack with that. And uh, so five range, two lightning bolts. He's five clicks long. He has a special attack and defense power. His first three clicks combined with precision strike and prob. He is an 11 for three top dial with eight speed, 18 defense. That uh, special speed power is leap climb. When Gambit is given a move action and moves five squares or less after resolutions, he may make an attack. That means it's slightly better than a charge or running shot because it gives him a little bit more room to walk, work with. Choices. And then his Cajun Charm is his defense, and that's Super Sense's toughness. So, yeah, just keep in mind, you have a one-third chance of picking the result. Otherwise, yeah, modify attack plus one. So he could be a 12 with Energy Explosion Precision Strike. He could be a six square reach with Penetrating Psychic Blast. He could be able to five square Quake, which on a small map is most things he could see. Yeah. shoot out of adjacency he can steal energy with uh his heart uh result and then he also has a trait that's maybe i've got a card up my sleeve stealth force blast force blast as free but only to target an adjacent character which man ton of knockback his last two clicks he loses the two special powers but he still has his two traits and he's a sidestep 11 for three with empower and combat reflexes so that combined with his traded stealth means on click four he's a 20 for close 55 points it's a fun little super rare i uh i really enjoy him he's x-men and team player and i think more so than gambit here what i really enjoy is the set symbol it's a the deadpool circle with like the line down the middle and then six claw marks so like an x that is formed by wolverine claws i really like that I think it's got to be one of the best set symbols we've gotten in a long time. Yeah, like that's just—it's a sick logo. It's gonna look so good on die. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, the Dyson Token Pack. Yeah, those are going to look sick. Uh, just to go over some more Deadpool Weapon X stuff, we got to see a few more sculpts. We have the Predator Wolverine Deadpool Handshake sculpt, which we've seen before. We have the Wolverine Issue 1. Come over here, bub. Creepy Wolverine staring at you <laughs> face sculpt. Uh, and then we get the Deadpool and Elsa Bloodstone sculpt. Looks like this is like King of the Monsters version of Deadpool. He's kind of got his like knees together. Like he's a little uh, embarrassed to be with Elsa Bloodstone here. He's a little, uh, little shy or something. I don't know what's going on here, but that's kind of fun. Uh, and then we get the old man Wolverine. Not like old man Logan, but like a older man Wolverine uh, wearing his blue jeans and his bomber jacket. Uh, but the cool thing is that it's on the head of this like sentinel is what he's standing or cr- kind of crouching, stabbing into. So it looks really sick. I really, really like this sculpt. Uh, big sentinel pieces are always fun, or it's like the gambit jumping out of like the sentinel hand, or uh, what was it Colossus? I think he had a he had a sentinel head that he was next to, like a super old sculpt. Yeah. So really fun, really cool. I want to say, is that everything for Deadpool Weapon X? We're kind of on the Deadpool. Yeah, that's Weapon X. The next train. set that's coming out, I believe. Yeah. So we've actually, uh, I think, seen less of that than the black panther stuff that we see because honestly yeah we see a ton of stuff for black panther i don't want to quite get crazy into the iconics okay yeah there is one more thing for weapon x that is the pizza box and the hit monkey heist pack where the okay what was the heist pack here the heist pack is 20 dollars, and it comes with a deadpool and hit monkey hero clicks figure and card and then a deadpool hit monkey team up card it kind of looks like a Kind of a safe, which is kind of fun. And then we also get the Jeff the Landshark pizza party. He gets a little pizza box himself. And that is going to come with what we've kind of similarly seen with these pizza boxes. It is not... Did you do? Okay, it does not come with two figures, right? I don't want to say. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I think it so is have just a side one that says, Jeff the Landshark. Yeah, Jeff the Landshark. And then it's their like joke about cauliflower crust gluten-free all the like top right. and stuff uh it comes with a character card team up card bystander and pizza object okay and so like the the ones that we saw from disney next phase had the other ones that were going to be in pizza boxes also listed on the side so i right. assume that jeff is on his own yes jeff time. we do get to see the sculpt uh really quickly for the deadpool hit monkey and it is little tiny hit monkey doing the, you know, I had to do it to him pose. <laughs> and then Deadpool crouching down like he's taking a call like a and talking to him. He's cell phone thing. <laughs> yeah, very old cell phone. And Deadpool's like mask is rolled up to see his gross face. But even more gross is that his suit pants are a little high. So you see he's not wearing socks and you just see his nasty Deadpool skin at his ankles, which is really funny. Yeah. Don't know how to feel about don't know how to feel about that if I'm being honest. Uh yeah, really really cool. Uh before we get too far into Black Panther, I think we'll hold off on Black Panther here for a second. Let's go ahead and talk the iconics line. They have a total roadmap for okay. the iconics that are coming out, which is really cool. Um, let me get to that. There it is. So March is the Colossal Kong, and they previewed all this stuff March 6th, so they said Happy Kong Day with that. So Kong is out. That was March's. February's, January's, whatever it was, the uh, Roses for Red and Sherlock. April is going to be the Wings of Eagly coming out April 3rd. May, on uh, May 1st, we have Peacemaker Project Butterfly, so the Peacemaker ones are going to be back-to-back. In June, we have the first appearance Wolverine. It says tracking on 6-5. Hoping it's going to be there. Same thing. Also in June, we get the Marvel Hero Clicks Iconics Hulkbuster. That's going to be 6-12. July, we're getting first appearance Avengers. That is going to be the 24th of July. So we have the end of July. Sculpts on that. Cause Got no clue. Yeah, <laughs> Zero clue. What all these the others, are. we've seen sculpts and maybe dials. I guess Kong's the only one we've seen dials, but yeah. First right. appearance Avengers, we haven't even seen sculpts. We have seen Eye of Beholder. Yes. All of these, like, so Eye of the Beholder is going to be September 25th, it looks like, uh, which is really cool. So the Beholder, is that the one that's coming with the sword or the chest? I can't remember. 
It's either the, the Beholder or the Displacer Beast. One of those two, they come with a special funny thing. But anyways, uh, just to read off this thing before we get too crazy into it, uh, October is going to be a big month for Iconics, and so is November, so with three Iconics coming out each. So October gets the Superman Up, Up, and Away, as well as the Cave of the Owl Bears, which is going to be a normal owl bear and an owl bear cub. Yeah. And then the Captain America from the Ice, which is apparently going to be a ice cap terrain, and then a Captain America figure. November, we get first appearance Spider Man. It says tracking 1023, but release notes November. Den of the Displacer Beast, and then Bat Cave Volume 1. Whatever yeah. the Bat Cave means. For Zero. an iconic set, Bat Cave Volume 1. Like, assuming there's going to be multiple volumes. Is it going to be like the Iron Man Hall of Armors where you can build it like from the like or like maybe it's just a display kind of thing like the Hall of Armors, but also comes with stuff? I don't know. Volume one obviously indicates that there's going to be more than one. So what'd be really cool, what I think would be awesome is if it got sculpted like the uh, Hall of Armors and you could like shove them all together and make like a little diorama of the bat cave like maybe there's like a giant 3d uh penny or whatever that thing is that would be so sick dude rex like the The penny the t-rex yes that'd be really big gotta have the bat computer right like a big old bat computer thing absolutely yeah maybe even like i don't know i I really love the 3d bat cave that we already have that was like the reason right yeah the little spot for uh I wanted to call him Jarvis, the, the little sc- spot for Alfred. The bat belt. And like, yeah, oh, Jarvis. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, Jarvis, the bat I was like, butler. what do you mean, Simeon? That is Jarvis. But yeah, you know, Alfred. <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, I think the one we already got is super iconic and really cool for display purposes. Hopefully this one being I- an iconics even like doubles that or something. Man, honestly, just saying that, I don't know if Ian owns the Batcave. I don't know if he has it. What? I would have. I would. I would so think it would be on the shelf. I mean, it's if he a, had a it, great display piece. It it's so piece. awesome. It if he doesn't has... own that, he's kind of kind of be a fake Bat fan, honestly. Yeah. Kind of a fake fake fan. If you ask me, I don't disagree. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. See, see, yeah. no objections. No. Obje- All right. All right, Ian. Listen, but please, uh, please write in. Attention, Ian. Are you a fake bat fan? Where is yeah, your bat you? cave? If you don't have uh, one, please turn in your nerd badge. So before we get too far into glancing over it, you're a bigger D and D guy than I am. You've bought some of the D and D miniatures. You've like painted a bunch of them. I like it. Uh, really quickly before I let you go off, um, I really like D and D. I enjoy the fact that we're getting new crazy creatures. I'm not a big fan of like the D&D world necessarily as I am just a fan of tabletop RPGs and getting able to kind of mold the world around players and have kind of a fun little campaign but getting these new cool interesting monsters I guess kind of iconic monsters and beings yeah. from D&D I think they they would be classified as monsters pretty much they're really cool so I'm really happy to get that in Hero Clicks anything that's new in Hero Clicks I like I think you as well. You always say like Hero Clicks is basically D and D combat, but yeah. whatever. So it's like, yeah, yeah it's just really a cool. D encounter, slightly simplified and streamlined. Yeah. I, so, so yeah, what do you think? I think it's. I mean, I I remember back in uh, Worlds 2019 saying to uh, one of the Wiz Kids employees back then, like, why don't you just package your like single clear like plastic? I I, I can see what I'm buying. D and D things with a switch click that, like you know, can because like Mage Knight were essentially the same thing where you could switch click them to the Mage Knight base or the Hero Clicks base. If they just had a switch click to go to a D and D base, like, yeah. So D and D players could buy it, throw away the Hero Clicks base or whatever, you know, play it how they wanted, and then Hero Clicks players could also buy it and just like you know use the Hero Clicks base. I thought that was a great idea, and now they're coming out with Iconics ones, which is a much different idea than what i was like originally thinking uh even like going back to our sculpt swaps where i was using like some of the D stuff um having a beholder that's just like on dial has its own iconics like box i think it's gonna be really cool beholders are like one of the i think one of the most iconic like D things owl bears are more recent 
Like that's like a much newer kind of D and D monster, but the owl bear and the owl bear cub, like it's just a really cool creature design. The owl bear cub is precious. Yeah, just precious. There's like a website, like old website, like back when early internet days. It was called Worth One Thousand, and it was just before anyone and everyone could Photoshop stuff real easy. People would Photoshop like a horse onto a horse fly. So like, you know. Obviously, it was fake, but it was like a, a Photoshop that were, it was like almost believable or something. Those always remind me of like Spy Kids 2, yes. the island of the, you know, yeah. <laughs> with Steve Buscemi's character makes all those weird, like the bull frog, and it's a bull and a frog, and like all these like weird, right. dumb animal mixtures. That's, yeah, that's I, that's I love it. Owl bear, you know? It's got yeah, like exactly. That's what it really reminds owl, me. But like the, like the head of the owl, the talons of an owl but then it's got like the body of a bear and it's like a massive creature terrifying very cool creature uh the displacer beast i have to say i you know i have like a 3.5 and a 5 edition uh monster manual and i've never once busted out a displacer beast against anyone so i don't know exactly what they do really i think just based off the uh they like teleport around right or they yeah, make like, it based they off like the name that's got to be what they do sorry just kidding. I've seen Dungeons and Dragons Thieves Among Us movie or whatever it's called. <laughs> I have not. I know. I know that the displacer piece, uh, it, whatever, it's, it uses its, those weird little, what are those things? Tendrils? What would you call them? Yeah. They like, they're like projections. They like project where that beast, uh, like a, a hologram basically of it. They like project itself somewhere else where you think that's what it is. And you're like, oh no. And then it actually sneaks upon you and kills you because that's not the real version. And it like teleports, I think as well. But that's kind of what it did in the movie. It's been a year since I've seen the movie, so it's really a little shaky. Want it. a gelatinous cube as like a night mm. and um, the ultimate lockdown. Yeah, obviously, He's... like I think mimic is like one of the top tier. Like that's that's so transcendent from D anD D that it's made it into like pop culture for like it really is. You know, it's in Dark Souls. It's in all kinds of different like video games. The thing that is disguised as a good thing and just like right. really shocks the player. Um, so yeah, I think that line has a great future. I think it's got a really yeah. s- solid future of like what they could do. Next up, let's jump into, I would, I think it's between D and D and this as one of the biggest announcements of gamma, but basically straight up a brand new set. We're announcing the next set of 2024. So after DC time masters, the set is going to be Marvel hero clicks, black, panther no illuminati no and the avengers just black panther a tried and true i'm hoping a tried and true black panther sex i've talked to a lot of people uh in the past couple of days about this people that are big black panther fans and they all kind of said the same thing where the black panther and the illuminati avengers and the illuminati set was more of like an avengers cosmic set than it was a black panther set so there there there's some high hopes here with black panther so i'm going to read the quick solicit First appearing in comics in 1966, Black Panther has gone on to be one of the world's most recognizable comic characters. In it, and in addition to leading a nation of Wakanda, he's even led the Avengers. Wakanda will be stronger than ever with a full set of Black Panther and his allies, ranging from the Dora Milaje to the crew and all of your favorite allies to T'Challa are here. Some of Black Panther's most dangerous foes also appear in the set, including Arnim Zola, AIM, Claw, and Namor. All of these villains come with their own awesome support and allies, making for some nail-biting battles. Harness the power of the mighty gods from the Marvel Universe, as well as ranging from Bost to Zeus. Defeat dastardly deities with the God Squad, featuring Snowbird, Hercules, and more. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I'm excited. The Arnim Zola and AIM gets me the most excited. Uh, no offense to Black Panther, I'm obviously a bigger Captain America fan. So getting a new Namor, Arnim Zola, and AIM as more so Captain America villains and allies is really cool. Although this Namor is probably going to be more so a straight up, like, I'm going to flood Wakanda, I hate you Black Panther type of Namor than it is a right. me and Cap are fighting Hydra in 1940, yeah, whatever probably, It Namor. could be invaders, but it's probably more I'd hope, like but yeah. the, the villain to the nation of Wakanda. The right. one that created the necropolis, <laughs> like that. Yeah, it's probably it's big bad super jealous boy Namor. The expected release on Black Panther, by the way, it says August twenty twenty four, so that's pretty cool. 
potentially uh probably more than likely probably our worlds set uh for sealed which is pretty fun yeah that's interesting especially since they like straight up name drop gods uh yes it'll be interesting to see if there was like a god pack because i know people had questions with next phase is there a god pack because not only are there gods but also this precursor disney plus had a god pack and i i don't know what makes them decide whether or not there's a god pack but if there was anything i think you know a set where you have gods and it's uh the world set interesting choice if they do that i mean there was a god pack of notorious a uh, black lantern so maybe true. maybe that means we will get a little, little god pack for black panther i love we the, do uh, see if um t'challa among the like heart-shaped herbs and he's holding one like in his hand yeah the, the 3d rendering of that for the solicit the purple base is just it really pops i've wanted them to use like more purple and like kind of funkier colors like that so he's just like in the field of heart shaped earth it's pretty cool i like we get to see a few of the gods well they're like quote unquote gods i'm assuming these are all chases because they have the special they call them god bases it's like a marble pillar and i really hope this translates well into in person because man do they look cool in the digital renders but bossed has a marble pillar base with like under it, like how cake Deadpool has a little something under it. Yeah. Uh, he also has like, and it looks like a, a column, which is really cool. And then around him looks like a Coliseum of columns on the, not the dial itself, but the base they stand on where the sculpt is, where normally right. we're used to getting like a chunk of green or, or gray or concrete or whatever. It looks like a Coliseum thing, which is really sweet. So we see a few gods, so I'm just kind of rattling them off. We see Venomized Killmonger with fire around him as well, which looks really sick. We see uh, T'Challa with the Phoenix Force, which also looks really dope. Any Phoenix Force, anything, just looks sick. The Phoenix, we actually see like its little bird head and the wings kind of wrap around him. We then see Storm, kind of the storm clouds, and then some blue really cool effects around her Her eyes are all white her hair is kind of flowing it looks really it looks like the sculpt is going to be massive we see bossed in a very crouched ready to pose kind of pose i guess uh we see lady loki sitting all nonchalantly really eating i mean she is eating the uh the the odin throne here yeah big old furry coat blanket thing she got going on here lady loki um and then is that all of them? I believe that is all of them that yeah. I see. One thing of little... note for sure, I think, is uh, all of them have that little pillar underneath the like dial. Right. Except Phoenix T'Challa, Phoenix like Black Panther, he is just 3D rendered with the different colored base and no pillar. Ooh. So it'll be interesting to see if the pillar is like detachable or if it doesn't come with all of them. I don't know. Because it'd Very be true. really cool if like, it was optional, so like you didn't have to play with it, but it would make like displaying them way cooler. Do you want to uh, talk about the chase retail booster here for Black Panther Simeon? I don't know if you have that pulled up or not. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so right after the uh, solicit of Black Panther, we also get a solicit for Marvel Hero Clicks Black Panther Retail Chase Booster OP Kit. So it says... Some people enjoy the finer things in life, advanced vibranium labs, lavish state dinners, or retail chase booster organized play kits. Boosters are one of the exciting parts of collecting Heroclix. Players get to open them and enjoy the surprise of what they'll get to play with. Retail chase booster organized play kits let stores bring the most exciting figures and boosters to their in-store events. Retail uh, chase booster organized play kits can be used for tournament prizing at a store's discretion. Some suggestions are giving the entire booster to the event winner unopened. Use other things as prizing for the other players. Opening the booster and let the top players take turns picking from them at draft style, as if you would. Uh, tracking games that players win over the course of a month and give the retail chase booster to the player who wins the most games. Offer two different big prizes, like the Retail Chase Booster and a store gift card, where the tournament winner picks their favorite and the runner-up receives the other. Or, like, a brick and a Retail Chase Booster. I could see that being, like, a really solid, like, second place if you're not going to... If it's a bigger event, I could see the Retail Chase Booster being, like, second place. Um, And then they go on, a Heroclix Retail Chase Booster is specifically designed for the Heroclix Superfan. It contains special dice... 
three bystander tokens and three figures that are rare or better. Each booster contains one pair of 22 millimeter premium dice, three exclusive bystander tokens, three figures, including one chase figure, and one reusable storage box. Note, limit two per store for qualifying stores while supplies last. So very, very uh, premium like product for this one. Yeah. See email on qualifying purchase requirement. Uh, it says this product is being offered as a reward to support our highest performing stores. Quantities are extremely limited with no reprints. All prizes, incentives, giveaways, and other activities are subject to local law. But I think one with it being including one chase, like guaranteed, that puts it at like almost brick value. You have a pair of 22 millimeter premium dice. I'm assuming they're going to be different than the dice and token pack. Three exclusive bystanders. One reusable storage box. Depends on what this storage box looks like. Depends on like a few other things. But I think this might be like as good as a brick of a set. You're getting Honestly, a chase. Yeah. Getting a rare and then probably super rare or better. Like, I don't know. It says, um, geez, where was that? Da, 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 uh, three bystanders, three figures that are rare or better. So you could get two rares in a chase, I suppose. But yeah, like you're getting like the best possible outcome of a booster premium dice three bystanders one chase guaranteed and then a reusable storage box it's interesting um i wish it wasn't as limited quantity as it was because i know holy cow i know these just sell off the shelves like crazy but it makes sense why it's limited because you don't want the the chases to suffer you know i wouldn't buy as many boosters of the normal set if i knew that hundreds and hundreds of people were getting these chase boosters and just like access to premium figures right i i still like it did you see the um here looks pinoy what's it called the next phase uh, unboxing of his chase booster that he did i did not okay yeah i i i just saw this pop up um the bystanders are different from the pizza box ones. There was, I think there was a Madison bystander and something else he got, but it was like a rare Kingpin, uncommon Hulk, and then it was like Chase, Hulk, and She-Hulk. So like any three figures, right? One's guaranteed to Chase. But he got like one dice, and it's massive. It's like a Groot dice. So I don't know if it's only like a one dice thing for the next phase boosters, but I'm happy that we're getting a guaranteed like a pair of dice with this Chase booster. That's super nice. But the bystanders look cool. Getting a guaranteed chase is cool. And I really like the way the box looked. More than anything, I do think the box is pretty sick. So I do think the reusable box container, whatever you want to call it, is honestly a pretty fun part of it. I really like I really like the box. The set symbol is like the little sticker on it. That's kind of like keeps it closed type of deal. So hopefully Black Panther has a cool set symbol. My guess because the tagline of Wakanda Forever is everywhere, is it might be his hands the cross, crossed the, yeah. over his like, mask. We do see several sculpts of... Yeah. From the, the play Quite a few people have the Wakanda Forever stuff. pose. Yeah. <laughs> They're do- yeah. Um, so I think it's going to be really cool. I like how big the dice are, too. They look sizably bigger than normal. Does that mean we have, like, what, 16, 14 millimeter? I don't know what Hero Hooks dice yeah, are, I guess. D6. Um, but these ones are pretty big. Like They're noticeably bigger. Um, and the bystanders all have like special text and everything, so they're all like unique new figures, basically. Most sets dice will correspond to the size of a D6, so normal D6 is 16 millimeter. 16? Okay, okay, that's what I thought. That's quite a bit bigger. No, like noticeable. Yeah, bigger. I mean eight. I mean that's a third. Yeah, a third of the size bigger. Or else, whatever. 16. So eight and eight is 16. So it's. I don't know what you would call that. Anyways, <laughs> it's yeah another size, bigger, whatever. It's divisible. They're divisible by eight. Anyways, uh, next up, to jump into some of these play-at-home kits here, the price for the play-at-home kit has gone up by $5. It's $25 instead of $20, but here's why, and I'm actually very okay with this. The play-at-home kit here is called Black Panther T'Challa versus Killmonger. The set includes... One Black Panther figure, which is normal to Chala Black Panther, and then a Killmonger figure, a terrain sheet, and then a double-sided map. So instead of coming with one figure and then a legacy card that we're used to getting, we're now getting two figures, which I think is, sure, charge me five more bucks. Now I'm getting two figures, and based off of the ones we were able to see for both Next Phase and the Ghost Rider set, they're, like, fairly complicated, like, 
they could say like the Begos are common level. These would be like a super rare ish complicatedness L E type of figure for the play at home kit. So I'm pretty cool with Black Panther and Killmonger. We're getting two figures, which is great. Again, the biggest thing is the terrain sheet that was very noticeably missing from the notorious play at home kit. Even though again, that map is baller. Like it's so sick. Brimstone is obviously great, but the no terrain sheet really sucked. So getting a terrain sheet guaranteed here in these is pretty awesome. We also get the Shuri versus Claw. We get a look at Shuri as Black Panther. It's the same thing. We get Black Panther Shuri and then Claw and then two figures. That's pretty cool. And then again, a limited edition uh, terrain sheet and a double sided map. It doesn't say any differences in the map, so I have no idea. The release day for Black Panther is also just a version of T'Challa, but he is unmasked instead. It also says, again, five copies of a map. So there's at least three maps with this set. I don't know if it'll be a Avengers 60th kind of thing where it's actually just four maps because they might reuse one side of the map. I hope not. So either way, we're getting a ton of maps to the Black Panther set, which I'm really cool with. Uh, do you want to get into some of these sculpts? You already kind of talked about, I guess, mask on, mask off, yeah, Black Panther the, the Shuri. Wakanda, like arms cross posed. Shuri's doing the same. She's in her Black Panther outfit. Um, I assume this is Luke Cage in like the, Gotta be, the right? best yellow shirt with like bald and beard. I haven't read a comic where Luke Cage had a beard, so I assume this is him just because his mannerisms i guess i don't know yeah <laughs> you know he's like he's like yellow is a pretty kind of look pretty yeah. primary color for luke too that's true so yeah i'm guessing this is luke cage just like more of like a business sided luke cage or like a more modern one get uh ugly little claw man like i don't know can't make this weird sound dude look any cooler um yeah but he is like doing ah throwing a punch even though his one hand is literally a sonic cannon i, so, I love that he's about to punch you that is yeah. hilarious <laughs> like i guess you know oh when, you crazy bro when you're crazy comes to worse just smack him i uh, like that claw also looks skinny and jacked at the same time yeah. something going on with his ribs is kind of weird uh like fight club brad pitt kind of yeah it's like lean emaciated, but like also muscular yeah it's like doesn't look healthy but it's also no. like, kind of looks healthy i don't know eating a lot of carrots i guess <laughs> uh, next is what? bubble skin killmonger with all of his little scars for each person he killed or whatever very symmetrically placed i guess he yes. i don't know if he got them all done at the same time or what but yeah it's him with his shirt off he's got the little skull belt so it's like classic killmonger with like the skull belt and like pants and boots but then it's got like the more MCU kind of stylized top half, I guess. With like, I can't remember what they call that hairstyle, but uh, yeah, that's I so, don't know. It's like the Killmonger look for sure. Yeah. Uh, then we get a a Miles Morales with his uh, like electro punch kind of like thing charged I like up this. and this like trail of that bioelectric stuff that he zaps people with. Uh, that and it's it's not the classic Miles costume. It's like a newer. Miles costume, which is really cool. Um, yeah, then you already went over the chases. I think those are going to be some standout sculpts for the year. Storm, uh, Phoenix, Black Panther, Loki. Like, those are going to be some hard to beat sculpts. I don't know. We'll have to see what other sets bring, but those look pretty sweet. I'm excited. We also get, we had a few people being curious about like colored bases again. So it's really awesome that we get colored bases in this like marbling texture i really hope that it's showing in the digital image right now we can see it pretty well in the digital image um but i hope it really shows through a few more images i went over to our page just to double check because there are a few missing uh from over at like the clicks nexus page we do get a dormelage sculpt uh with some red arrows on her head kind of like almost avatar style is kind of interesting and then we get an mbaku sculpt very mcu looking uh great ape uh mbaku kind of version which looks cool uh probably one of the craziest ones that we get night thrasher is kind of wild that he yeah, exists yeah. Lord is massive it looks pretty cool I haven't had he's a night thrasher since avengers assemble back oh, in geez, 2017 really? gosh 2000, yeah it's been two, no that's 2016 15 that's been a hot hot minute since we yeah. got him 
Uh, I'm trying to double check. Are there any other sculpts we missed from previous sets? We did get to see some more Time Masters sculpts. We get a kind of cowboy Batman, a Blackbeard Batman. We get a Clock King with a bunch of clocks on him. He's standing on a Roman numeral old style clock. Let's see, he's double quadded up. He's got two clocks on each thigh. He's got five clocks, one on each peck. Look at this guy. Clock on the belt, and then a clock on the seps, as well as a, a big clock face. So he looks hilarious. We get a better look at Vandal Savage. I want to see that's it for Time Masters. What else is there? All the D&D sculpts look great. Yeah, they did put a sculpt comparison for the oh yeah batman so he's clocking in a just a hair above 21 <laughs> real world feet quote yes yeah, his real world, world feet. feet so a six foot tall human being yeah stands mid thigh so to like, bat or <laughs> what's, what's steve six three six five yeah i think captain american comics is like six two six three i think it's close so to that this is not quite like just a few inches short of three times what a normal Captain America should be if he's like if they're both standing right. upright. Um, so yeah, like almost three times the scale of a real world a feet. Figure. That's so that's so funny. <laughs> yeah. I was hoping it would be in like actual scalable inches. Yeah, but yeah, uh, it's, it's real just world guesstimation feet. numbers that we have. So it's gonna be big. That's all these dinosaurs have to be is big. Yeah, like the sculpts just got to be big and cool. That's all I want. And they're looking like they're going to be big and cool. So I'm excited. I want to say that's everything from Gamma. I don't think we're missing anything else. And we got all the Black Panther stuff. I'm excited. I think it's it really is going to be a good year for Hero Clicks. I think it's going to be a standout year. And I really can't wait to, I don't know, start cracking into it. The Gamma did everything it made me... I don't know that it's like supposed to sought out to do right. It makes me excited for Deadpool makes me excited for time masters. And even though I won't lie, I'm not a big black Panther fan. I am curious to see what black Panther is going to be like. And ultimately I hope it's a fun sealed set, especially since it's looking like it's going to be our world set this year. So a fun sealed set, a fun one to cover. Notorious is kind of a lot to live up to. As far as like a set goes, it was voted the best set of last year. So not that Black Panther needs to be the best set of last year, but Notorious was a very good sealed set. So I really hope it can live up to the reputation that the previous world sealed set uh, kind of put in place. So we'll see. That is it for news. Let's go ahead and jump into some listener questions. There are dozens of us. Dozens! These are all coming from our Discord. I want to do a massive shout out to some of our Patreon members. We had a lot of new Patreon members this last month. We made some really cool new tokens that I'm excited to get in the mail for everybody. But we were able to get over $300 on our Patreon. It's absolutely incredible. It literally, you know, it cannot be understated how much this means to us guys. So I want to shout out a handful of new members. So Really quickly, uh, Roman Fortuna, thank you so much for joining as a member. We also had, uh, I want to say, man, wow, the notifications on this are awful. Oh, my gosh. Uh, shout out to Drizzerk, Dylan Kassabom, Brandon Bruner. We also had Alex Morse upgrade his membership along with Ethan Jacobs and Jim Pilapil makes stuff upgraded. Uh, shout out to Will Holland for joining as a member, as well as Samuel Phoenix joining as a member, and Elijah Becker joining. So thank you guys so much. It is seriously thanks to your support that we are able to not only buy a lot of really cool stuff for the studio, but kind of keep Dial H's expenses kind of under, like, being too crazy, as well as getting a lot of really cool stuff to improve all of our videos, uh, getting things like new cameras. I think we're looking at getting a power bank here soon so that we can more easily keep our stuff charged uh, while we are out on the go doing um, coverage and everything. So big shout out to everybody that is on the Patreon and helps make our Patreon community, I think, one of the best. I think we have like one of the best, most fun discords for Patreon. Everybody is super fun to talk with, as well as no one really shuts anybody down like crazy, where it's like they all have an idea and they kind of spitball mold the idea and kind of have fun chatting with it. So again, thank you guys so much for supporting the show. 
it seriously can't be understated. It means so much to us. But all these questions are coming from Patreon. First up, Wesley R. asks, What advice do you have for packing for an event? What do you take with you from home? Do you pack all your modern stuff in case someone needs it? What do you take with you to the table? And basically, just what do you need for your team? Is it extra terrain tokens in your case that isn't prepared? And then, what is considered proper tournament etiquette? And what is being over-prepared? Simeon, you want to give a first stab at this? Sure. Uh, so, what advice for packing for an event? Um, extra underwear, socks, clothes. Uh, oh, my gosh. Yes. <laughs> no. But, like, the uh, essentially, like, pack everything you would normally need. As far as clicks, which I assume is what Wesley was asking, um, yeah, make sure if the event like let's say you're going to worlds and you're considering playing in silver you're consider considering playing in modern make sure you have a team for everything that you potentially would play in make sure you have maps 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 i don't know how many times i've gone to an event got like halfway there and realized i forgot to pack maps so make sure you pack maps because if you don't have maps you're going to rely on like the kindness of strangers which luckily this community that's pretty good but still make sure you have the things to play on, the things to play with, all of your team stuff, all of the cards that you need. Yeah, like that's that's the big stuff. Uh, what do you take with you from home? Uh, honestly, like I just I have a little Stanley box that fits a modern 300 team as long as it's not like any colossals or anything. So that fits like the team, fits the cards. Then I have way too many extra dice, way too many extra like terrain pieces. Uh, tokens, etc. So I don't ever have to worry about that stuff. Uh, what do I take with my with me from table to table? I take that whole case. I put my team on top of it as if it was a click tray. They don't slide in pretty like click trays, but that's essentially like what I do is I I can slide my team on top of it and I can walk to the next table. And so yeah, I think that's what I've been doing as long as I can remember. And then uh, in case your opponent isn't prepared, I don't worry too much about, like, if my opponent needs something. I have, you know, extra terrain and et cetera. I prefer using, if somebody's going to, like, be blowing out walls, destroying stuff, like Lucas, when he was playing his Tri-Sentinel team, he had, mm. like, 40 uh, debris tokens or whatever. I just let him use all of his and I, like, borrow his, because I don't want to try and be like, how many did you place, how many did I place, blah, blah, blah. So, like, in those kind of situations, sure, have stuff for your opponent. Uh, what is considered proper tournament etiquette, and what is being overprepared? Just keep in mind, with, like, some venues, you'll be, like, not really shoulder to shoulder, but you might not have, like, room for suitcase, backpack, etc., and it might be kind of, like, bumping elbows to, like, try and pick up your team. Sideline might need to be Located like that's where trays come in real handy is if you have a sideline that you can leave on the tray I think most tournament organization has gotten better about having that space But there's been some tournaments I've gone to where my sideline gets a little bit mixed up with the person next to me and I you know Like they're not playing against me, but like, you know, I don't want to walk away with one of their things They don't want to walk away with one of my things hopefully, but yeah, that's I think being over prepared is not possible in this such situation having too much extra stuff for sure because then you just take up space that isn't available i agree with that i don't take a ton of things to a tournament but i at least try to hit all my necessities and then just in case i will say it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it i can specifically remember that i 100 percent lost a game at a tournament because I did not bring all of my maps and I needed a more closed indoor map for this tournament. I was like, ah, shoot, I forgot to bring Star Trek Underground. Whatever, I'll play without it. And then I like 100% lost the last game I played that day during like top four cut because I could not put my opponent on that map. So bring all of your maps that like any modern legal map, just bring them because you never know, especially to a sealed tournament. That's one of the few things you can control sometimes the map you're playing on or at least your choice of maps so seriously bring all your maps yeah uh, i always bring i also you used know, to bring extra like uh what were like super friends and stuff that i wasn't using oh because cool. like any free sideline any free stuff like i'm not gonna bring every tarot card i have but uh check out the 
Heroclix Mooching House, and like you if go. you're bringing stuff for other people, that's where to request stuff and where to tell people that you got their back and you'll bring it. But I used to bring like the the free sideline stuff because some pe- times people would be like, oh, I have an open sideline space and nothing to put there, and I'd be like, oh well, here's a you know Green Lantern and Cairo, or <laughs> more than likely, that it's is like nice. you got a Black Vulcan or a, like a Flash or yeah, you know, one of the more popular ones, but still. Good stuff. The good stuff. But yeah, bring your team. And then if you were ever iffy on like building your team and it went through a few different variations, I always bring some of the extra stuff that may or may not fit on my team, but mostly bring my sealed or my constructed team, the variations for it. Any extra stuff. I think terrain. I think bring just like most of your named terrain pieces, the two by two blocking, the, you know, three by three elevated platform, like all that stuff, like any of the really big terrain. And then a handful of the smaller one by one terrains. If you end up playing sealed, uh, stuff like that, all your maps, a couple pairs of dice, plenty of action tokens, line of fire tool, things of that nature. What Simeon said, extra pair of pack and underwear for every single day. And then two more pairs. That's what I always do. Anytime yep. I go on a trip, that's the greatest fear in the world. Is that I'll have to use them, and if I don't end up using them, then it's totally fine. But that's I always, I just always. Uh, I don't. I really don't think there is uh, too much as being over prepared, as long as you don't lug all of it with you. You know, if you bring all of your modern stuff and you leave it in your hotel room, leave it in your car, or whatever, that's fine. Yeah. You just don't drag it with you from table to table is all. I wouldn't, yeah, and I wouldn't worry about like yeah. packing like when you get to like let's say Memphis let's like, say you're going to Worlds when you get there you can like run to the nearest like Walmart and pick up snacks, drinks, whatever yeah. you need. You don't need to haul that across country or take a flight with like a whole box of like granola bars or whatever. Maybe a few in your backpack just for like travel purposes or something. I would, yeah. You know, do, you, what you take with travel but that's also like something you should have on hand at a tournament is uh like some some amount of like not really i'm not gonna say like snackies but uh yeah there's things to keep your energy up you never know like if you go to a state tournament and they're like hey everyone cool with us uh not doing like a break for a break lunch, and we yeah, just start top cut right now and if you're in the like the minority of that decision then Maybe it would be a good idea to pop out that granola <laughs> bar. And top eight a little hungry sometimes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, next question Wesley has here is: What advice do you have for someone that's going to Adepticon but is intimidated by the game Legacy Titans of the game? Uh, besides just trying to have fun, I don't know if you mean like players, like I Legacy Titans, he means or like players like uh, the George Masus, the Daniel Powell, like the big name top of the tournament kind of like dudes um, you know i guess like even more so like you know the uh isaac arnold berkovitz's kind of thing i think probably the biggest takeaway when you think of the big name players the legacy titans whatever you want to call them they've lost more games than you've probably played honestly like like if they've, they've been playing the game for so long they've lost a bunch they've won a bunch and ultimately, they're people that make mistakes just like you and me. I know the very first, or like one of the first or second Hero Hooks tournaments I went to, this is like 2017, I want to say was the year it was in here in Omaha, Nebraska. And I was like shaking when I found out that in XXS Sealed, I had to play against Edward Shelton. Like it was him and me uh, in the Sealed tournament for like the top table. And I was like, I can't play against Edward Shelton and you know like I was freaking out I was like no way like Edward Shelton that's dark logos I can't who am I I'm some I'm some kid I mean I was 18 at the time I was like I can't play again this is illegal I'm not (laughs) supposed to be here I can't be second place that's absurd that's no this isn't this isn't how this is supposed to work um and I like my team totally could have potentially beat his team but I like totally psyched myself out over it. I was like, people like me don't be people like Edward. Like that was I've already had written myself out. So don't write yourself out. Just so you know, these guys they lose games all the time. Like that's just facts. They might not want to hear it, but you know, Sammy and I, we lose games all the time. We win games all the time. I Whatever. Went, I went zero and three today. So see, <laughs> it happens. So like, whenever you feel like, oh no, that's a person whose name I recognize from the community or whatever, they can be. 
you know, I won't lie and say that you have a great chance at beating them if you don't play as much as they do, but they lose games. And sometimes game is like whatever. If you don't understand their team. Sometimes it's not like secret ultra tech that they developed and like you're going to have no chance against. Sometimes they're just testing out stuff and it's bad. Like, yeah, I'm not going to say every time because if it's at Worlds, then more than likely it's been tested and it's yeah, crazy. pretty dialed man. But maybe at like nationals or something like you might play against, you know, like I'd I'd be scared going against uh, the Lucas Spencer mission points team. Oh, my gosh. Terrified. But we did see that team lose. So like it's, you know, it just kind of comes down to luck. A lot of it comes down to luck. A lot of it comes down to knowing what your team is. I guess. Yeah. The advice I would have is know your team better than like your opponent. Like, if yeah, you're playing you playing something that you're comfortable with. Just play it the way that you normally would play it comfortably. Don't try and like outthink your opponent. Don't let them like psych you out just because they have, you know, a podcast or <laughs> like, a, right. Yeah. You know, a top 10 win or like whatever, like even like a world's win. Everyone gets lucky. Meta's shift. People that won in 2017 were winning with ID cards. Same with like 2018. Like that was a completely different era. Those type of like the people that won then, do they still win? Yeah, because they like also adapted. Right. But it's a different like game. So like, uh, you know, some people will continue to be at the top table. Some people won once or like placed really well when the meta was different and they haven't shifted well. So yeah, I wouldn't say like, just try to have fun. Try your best, but also, yeah, don't worry about it. Like I, I don't know. Yeah. It's hard to say. Don't worry about it because I've had this situation, and the first like thought I had was like, "There's zero chance I'm I'm winning against Easton Brock. He's ten times the player I am. He's sure, probably yeah. practiced this like you know." But I still did really well in that game, and I learned a lot about the team that he was playing that I didn't know before. So, yeah, yeah, yeah I like that. Uh, next up, we have some really fun questions to follow some more serious questions. Alex asks, Calder, what is your best cow-based Joker pun? And then he asked the same for Simeon, but for billboards. Uh, I think there's a lot of cow puns. Definitely more than there are billboard puns. Yeah, we I, think the, um, the, <laughs> I think the classics for cow puns are like, what do you call a cow with no legs? Ground beef. What do you call a cow with Two legs, lean beef. Those are some of my, those are some of my favorites. Uh, I can't say I think of too crazy uh, many cow puns, but there's there's a handful out there. But those are probably my favorites. Are they the best? Probably not. They're the ones most people know, though. Uh, I don't know, Simeon. Do you have any billboard or signage puns? Yeah. I guess uh, there's like the classic, like, how's it going? Oh, you know, hanging in there. Mm. The joke That's is pretty good. if you fall. You literally just like hang because of the harness. Um, also, like billboards are hung; they're not like pasted or glued. They they're like ah. strapped, so like they're hanging. But uh, yeah, like stuff like that, I guess. Uh, what's up, me? That's like a classic. Mm. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's probably it, though. There's really not a whole <laughs> lot in the billboard world. It's uh, it's not a funny place to be most of the time. Oh gosh. Uh, we got another question from Wesley here. He says, Heroclix is a nation. Dial H is the president. What is the state of the Heroclix nation? I won't give you a state of the nation address because that'd be like really long and probably boring. But I'd say it's great. I am really enjoying currently this year. I like the upswing in interest in getting more organized play happening. I like the upswing in new things coming out. Beetlejuice, Dungeons and Dragons, new properties. I love the idea of certain sets that are coming out this year, a silly and serious Deadpool Weapon X set, a awesome, just looks freaking cool Time Master set, and then I'm very curious to see how Black Panther, the Black Panther set is, but a set of an iconic character people have been waiting for. So I think the state of the Hero Hooks Nation is in one of the healthiest it's been in a very long time, and I think that's awesome. I think it's only going to get better. I have high hopes, high hopes for this year and coming years. Yeah, I agree. I think that the state is on the mend. I think if like we were to say anything, it, it's uh, looking like we're looking towards like a prosperous future. If you want to get like political wordage about it, I don't, I don't know. Sure. I think yeah, like the the darker days of clicks are behind us. We have in uh, in WizKids, I think that they are pushing and hiring people 
to make a a better like hero clicks for tomorrow whether like you know maybe not in every aspect but at least in like the organized play aspect they've hired somebody for that position didn't even know that was a position that they were offering until they announced it so like yeah it's it's really cool and i think that yeah that's it can only upswing from here hopefully carnage bruner then asks what meta defining characters are or were your favorite when they were modern this can be because of the mechanics they utilized or perhaps because they were your favorite character being a meta staple. When I think about the different times in competitive modern play that I played, most of the times I was probably playing very offbeat modern. So from the beginning of my competitive career around 2016, 2015, my favorite piece was the uncommon subterfuge Lex Luthor from Trinity War. Uh, Lex Luthor is like one of my favorite DC characters. And I actually, you know, hate me as much as you want, really enjoyed ID card call-in battery teams. And I really liked that I could use one of my favorite characters, Lex Luthor, on a team like that. So from that era, it was that version of Lex Luthor. Kind of jumping forward, because he was actually like a meta piece versus like in 2017, my meta idea was like Scourge Prime, who I thought was meta and it definitely was not. I lost a lot of I did make top eight, but I lost a lot of games. Um, and then also Element Man was a figure I really tried to push him and Shifting oh, Focus yeah. Deadpool, because those were just fun pieces. They were not meta, but they did OK, like. Uh, and so, like, next to, like, a meta piece, maybe the 2018, 2019 era of, oh, uh, yeah, 2018 era of EarthX, uh, Cap, uh, Resilient here, uh, Resilient. He was awesome. He, I won states, so I'm going to call him a meta piece, even though not many other people played him. But I won states them, but I also won it using, like, Sam Cap, Overdrive, other meta pieces that I just really enjoyed. Sam Cap was up there because she's obviously an alternate version of Sam Wilson, Captain America. So I really liked her. Um... And then, like, any Lantern Construct dropper, I love. And I'll call him a meta piece, even though I was the only one that played him. But the Legacy card, Ultimate's Captain America. Because, again, favorite character that I was able to do pretty well with at Nationals last year. And, yeah. Those would be, like, my kind of, I guess, meta pieces that I can think of throughout different eras of the meta I played for teams that I personally really enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I think my... My biggest uh like meta escapade was in the era of uh tri sentinel vulture that Mm. kind of stuff so like the first worlds that i took a team to that i actually thought was like good was i think the meta staples from it were to a lesser extent like sheriff strange he just messed with id cards to an extent where people that like were banking on being able to do an id card like back to back or every turn might not be able to do that might not be able to pull that stuff off he didn't necessarily shut them down but he did like make it quite a bit harder to do um pin pocket tank was something that as much as i hated it man there was like a lot of like bad things out there that it helped shut down uh hawkeye the chase hawkeye that could oh man yeah like over retaliation seeing chase hawkeye be able to burn through like a hundred points of retail or maybe even more i'm pretty sure in one game i killed like ah jeez two carnages two surters that's 70 plus a mangog that's a hundred yeah i I don't know off the top of my head but i've definitely killed quite a few points of retail with uh hawkeye and vulture vulture was like i mean just broken hawkeye wasn't broken because at worst, he was doing like two or three damage. Yeah, Vulture, Vulture was like clearing your to, team. Yeah, he was able to, to just straight up nuke an entire team. And if there was a figure that could potentially uh, take more than one like flurry from him, he could just kill the whole rest of the team and then leave that figure. Or he could kill the whole rest of the team, bank charges, which was insane, and then flurry that person like seven times. Uh, so Vulture was just broken. I won't say that was one of my favorites, but like that era with the uh, Tri Sentinels being able to like pop off before they were broken, and then got fixed. And then also like Hawkeye, the AI, the Mjolnir, all that stuff. I hated ID cards, but it was cool that with only a few ID cards, certain teams could still really shine. And it was more so 
I might need a TK. I might need a defend. Like that was my mm-hmm. builds back then. It wasn't like I'm gonna move up and call in Wolverine and like Cyclops, and then next turn I'm gonna call in the other Wolverine and the other Cyclops. Like right. But no, that was my era where I really like dug my teeth into the meta, and so those are the figures that I really enjoyed. Even if I don't think they were healthy for the game, I think it was fun. <clears throat> oh, that's hilarious. Alex asks, this is a hilarious question. Alex says, if each member of the Dial H crew had cutie marks, what would they be? Uh, for those that have no idea what this means, he just says it's a My Little Pony thing. So quickly. I'm guessing it's like the Care Bear marks where it's just like a shape. It's very similar. So this goes on their flank, so their side of their butt, basically, for a horse. Or for us, I guess it'd be like our thigh or side of our butt. Um, But let's say for this section, we're ponies, and we would get cutie marks in the My Little Pony world. Uh, Mostly in, like, the show, it's usually, like, kind of a mix between their passion and their profession. Um, Kind of like the things the character is known for. So... Uh, there are some where it's very obvious, like Applejack is an apple farmer, owns an apple orchard, continues on her family's love of apples, and she has three apples as her cutie mark. Whereas Pinkie Pie, who works at a bakery, um, she, but she loves partying, and she likes hosting events and planning parties for her friends and making people happy. So instead of just being like her profession, like a baker or whatever, uh, her thing is like party balloons is her cutie mark. So there's kind of a few different ways that you can do cutie marks. Um, like Fluttershy cares for all animals, big and small. So she has a butterfly, one of the more like delicate cutie animals. Twilight Sparkle just kind of has sparkles for her cutie mark, even though she's more of a uh, pursuit of knowledge type of person uh, or she works at a library. So there's kind of a few different ways you can go with a cutie mark to where it more fits your style as a person or it's like a profession or a passion kind of personality stuff like that uh like derpy hooves has bubbles as her cutie mark she's just kind of a bubbly person there's kind of a few aspects and ultimately it's like well what would be the coolest maybe or most fitting one i guess Hmm. so to give ian one i think he could have a few Uh, i think uh two monitors would be a great (laughs) cutie mark for ian as he is the the uh computer uh, more so video editor guy of the crew, but definitely the the, the two monitors, 100% the dual monitors has to have it for Ian. I think that'd be a fun cutie mark uh, for him. I think also if we would say his pony is wearing a ham's hat, he doesn't have to have a ham's hat <laughs> cutie mark. I think that would also work really well. <laughs> or even a uh, a Batman cutie mark or some type of thing like that would be really cool. I don't know. Simeon, does that... Yeah, I think that's right. What do you think you could do? Um, yeah, okay. Man, I because I don't want like I don't want like a uh, wings covered in sauce, like flats with sauce on them as so a mark. Uh, so maybe like a vinyl or like some CDs. Even though okay. most of my music listening is done on Spotify nowadays, um, that's probably like the if I was gonna pick like a thing that. Uh, not really defines me but something that like i enjoy more than anything else in the world well the last thing i would give up would be music like a passion like a passion of yours would be yeah so i'd I'd go with like some form of like i mean even oh man that's like an actual tattoo that people get but like musical notes i guess Mm. Um, or even like with the um like recording software i can't remember the actual name for like the the little like bumps when you make noise while it's recording but i've seen people oh. that get like tattoos or like that engraved on something and if you were to play it it's like someone's voice or whatever uh those would be fun too okay. but that's less noticeable i don't that would just look like weird squiggles but yeah i think i'd have to go with that sure. nice vinyl cds stuff like that. that'd be cool yeah i don't know how my cutie mark isn't it's got to be a captain america shield i really thought about a few other things, but I think ultimately, I think my cutie mark kind of has to be a Captain America shield. I don't know how it wouldn't be. I think, yeah, yeah, that's that what I, fair. that's what I would give myself. I don't know, like maybe a shotgun chainsaw for like Ash kind of crossed <laughs> over each other. But I think it's, I think still, I think Captain America shield has got to be what it is. 
Tyler M. asks our last question here. With the Arrow equipment cards now in the game, should we expect to see a rise in dual discs in upcoming tournaments? Possibly people banished to the Shadow Realm? Dare we say banished to the HC, HC Realm? Realm. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, the most you know, inside joke. Uh, I hope so, but I doubt it. I don't know. If, I don't think people got the stones, the guts. I, to bring I a dual know, with, with, the, the with old we'll Adam see. over there making crazy 3D uh, carrying boxes and stuff, I could see some sort of trap card holding device. Like, yeah, not okay. necessarily like a switchblade one where you like flip out to be like, ha ha, I hit you with a ranged attack and I will activate big danger arrow. <laughs> but uh, I'm not sure if it'll be that extent, but I definitely think there's room for it in uh, the Heroclix gameplay kind of stuff. Right on. I I would hope so. It would be really, really, really sick. You know, just, yeah, absolutely. Something like that. Some more fun. People love accessories. People love accessorizing. So let's see it. I hope there's something cool and fun because ultimately, yeah, trick arrows. Little, ooh, flipping. what's it going to be? Yeah. Speaking of Adam Shiver. I don't know if you saw the the rocket red. Oh yes, thing. Yeah. Don't know how I feel about some th- of it. I thought it was some parts. Like uh, I don't. I th- when I'm I first not. Saw it, I thought uh, it was. Um, yeah, Winter Soldier. Because like oh like, the, sure, the, sure, the, sure 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 the red the star. red star and then yeah like the the hammer sickle like stuff. So that's what I, I don't know what that's actually from, but it is a very unique design. Very cool. Just. I instantly was like, oh, is this some sort of... It doesn't make sense because it's white, but is it some sort of a Winter Soldier-like theme? And then I read, and I was like, oh, I don't know what it is, I guess. Yeah. I've never thought in my life I would meet somebody who is such a big Rocket Red fan. This is truly wild. And then the picture of all of the... Just because it, we you mentioned Adam, and like this is obviously one of his like cases, uh, the... Tons and tons of REV versions of Rocket Red is truly wild. This guy doesn't even have a Streets of Gotham one representing. What the heck, bro? But all of the REV Rocket Reds are just truly, truly, truly wild to see all of these. Um, yeah, I gotta say it was shocking at first. I was like, wow, very bold choice until I realized it was Rocket Red. And then I was like, oh, sure. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I'm with you. Never mind. Uh, really cool. Really just wild. <laughs> wild. Oh, truly wildly unique Hero Clicks Trey. It's kind of hilarious. Yeah, he's been pumping out some uh, cool ones. You do. He really has. But he really, really has. But that's it. You know what? What's that? We've got the Marvel Disney Plus next phase coming out next week. That's right. That means keep your eye on CoolStuffInc.com for all the latest HeroClix singles and sealed products. I know I'm going to be hopping on there to pick up some goons and some arrows and mostly more goons. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to use Code you, Dial you 5 when I do. Top goon. Do I have a top goon? I, I am the top goon, so I don't. You are. The, that's right. You are the top goon. Uh, but no, uh, check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use Code Dial 5 to save 5% off when you do. Works on all orders of singles and sealed products. So make sure you use that code. Save yourself a little bit of money. And anything over $100, I believe, is free shipping, at least in the U.S. I'm not sure about to Canada and other places but you know who does for sure ship to like over 200 oh. plus countries that's oh, uh, shop.wizkids.com you can go there and you can uh you can check out sealed products you can check out you know iconics you can check out their board games their mage knight figures that are still being made i guess what apocalypse dragon as a mage knight figure yes that's the thing that's there too and when you go there, if you're picking up some hero clicks, use code DIALH10 to save 10% off. Doesn't work with iconics, specialty figures, or pre orders. But otherwise, check them out. Try the code. And like always, ladies and gentlemen, for all your hero clicks needs to podcast, YouTube videos, and so much more, make sure you dial H. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Ooh. <laughs> not going there. That's how numbers work. Over okay, yeah, six people think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of this case uh, doesn't matter.